says she's going to post more frequently, but ends up taking just as long to upload this video as she did the last one. <coughs> Oops. But hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. And in this uh, late video, we're going to be making a slow Loris. And when starting a new art doll, as always, I like to start off with the head and feet. Now, I personally use Super Sculpey, but you can use any polymer clay that you prefer. Fimo, Primo Sculpey, Sculpey 3, Sculpey Original, Sculpey Firm, Michael's polymer clay. Like any type of polymer clay you want, you can go for it. Just as long as you can bake it in the oven so it's a lot easier for you. And what I do is I take a lump of tin foil first and I squish it into a rough head shape that I'm going for. I do this for a few reasons. The first one that it'll save me clay. I'm going to be using a lot less. It won't be as heavy so the wire won't bend or tip over because of the weight distribution. And then it'll bake more evenly in the oven since as I mentioned it's not going to be as thick of a layer of clay. And once I have the rough head shape, I go ahead and put a layer of clay over the entire thing and then just start squishing it around to figure out where I want general placements at. And then I'll go ahead and start detailing everything, putting a little bit more clay on the cheeks, putting clay on the snout area. You know, you really want to make sure that you're looking at references the entire time you're doing things like this. It'll really help you where you want to place more clay at, especially looking at your sculpture from all different angles because you'll maybe look at it from the top and see that it looks completely fine. But if you look at it forward, you'll realize that the cheeks on the bottom need to be like beefed up way more. So making sure you're looking at it from all angles really helps out and references really help out as well. For this particular piece, I'm actually using glass cabochons that I made myself. They are printed glass eyes. I'm still trying to figure out the technique and work out some kinks and stuff before I share how I did this. But um, I just, they look a lot better than I thought they would. And I'm totally going to be doing this from now on. Using glass eyes just adds a whole new layer of like life likeness to them and if you don't know how to make them yourself they are available on things like etsy there's just tons and tons of different eyes to choose from so if you can't make them yourself um, check out etsy it's a good place to find things like this um, now i'm a firm believer in the fact that you can get away with sculpting with just your hands and maybe a needle but i've recently come to love sculpting tools so if you want your life just a little bit easier, I really suggest getting them. I got these, I think it was a pack of four for like 15 bucks from Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can find it somewhere cheaper. But um, if you can get your hands on some, it'll make your life a whole lot easier. Especially when doing like noses and stuff and you know, you really gotta get in there and you gotta get that small little detail. Ooh, it really helps. <laughs>
what do you mean that this is not a slow loris? What do you mean that this is the exact footage that I used on the last video because I forgot to record it for this video and so I need to put something here to show you guys how to make bodies. I don't know what you're talking about. That looks like a slow loris to me. So to build up the body for this slow loris and not totally a wolf from the last video, <clears throat> Um, I use quilt batting and I just start with very long strips and I start wrapping it around the wire over and over and over again until I slowly build up the body. Um, I try not to go as thick as I want just because I know that when I sew up with the faux fur it's going to add a little bit of girth to it. So you always want to do it just a little bit thinner than how you actually want the body to look. Or you can go as beefy as you want. I mean, really, it's up to you. It's going to be your creation. You know, go for it. But typically, that's what I do. Now once the body's all built up, um, it's time to cut out the patterns for sewing. And I say that phrase very loosely because it's a very wing it, go for it method that doesn't really make sense, but I'll try to explain it the best I can. This is kind of a situation where, <sighs> my dog is scratching, what are you doing? <laughs> But this is a situation where footage will help a lot more than words. But basically, I just cut a long piece of fabric the entire length of the doll. And then I will make slits where I push the legs through. And then I'll just trim it so that it fits nice and snug around the body. And then sew straight down the middle with a basic stitch. For the legs, I repeat a similar process. I'll cut a piece of fabric the entire length of the leg, and then I'll start sewing from the feet and working my way up towards the body, and then to con then to co and then to join the two fabrics together, I use a ladder stitch. And once it's all sewn and fluffy, I always like to go with a pet trimmer and just shave down a little bit, um, especially around the legs to make them a little bit more thinner and not as fluffy so that it shapes the body a little bit more and I really recommend pet trimmers um, if you're ever trying to because they just work so much better than scissors you're not going to get like clumps or, or dig in too deep on one cut and not enough on the other it's going to be all nice and even and smooth and I just I really recommend these things and it makes it so much faster you know you take something that's going to take you like 30 40 minutes to like 10 20 minutes and you just oh oh I love these things I totally recommend them but even after I um, go at them with the pet trimmer I do like to go back in with scissors because sometimes it's just not going to get it as thin as I want and I just want a little bit more thinner just a little bit more thinner so I'll go back in with the scissors <laughs>
Once all the trimming and furring is done, and if you do want to know how I fur my face, is that kind of content is available on my Patreon, and I'll leave a link in the description if any of you are interested. But after that, it's time to go into the airbrush. And I use a dual action siphon feed airbrush, and it's totally a mouthful, but it's just an airbrush that has a paint container that connects to the bottom. Um, I use this to create all the markings that the Slow Lores has. Now I have gotten a few questions on whether or not using an airbrush makes the fur textured or if it makes it stiff or not. And as long as you're careful and you don't over paint it, you don't add too many layers, the fur will stay the same. Um, it's once you start adding, like say you're not brushing it out and you've added so many layers of paint that will start to change the texture, but as long as you're not over heavy with it you're not overwhelming the fur with it then no it's totally fine i only did a a few layers with this one it worked out really well the fur took the paint very easily and so i didn't need to go back in with so many layers and so the fur stayed nice and soft like it originally was And after that, this guy's done. As always, I wanna say thank you guys for watching my videos and taking the time out of your day. If you happen to enjoy it, maybe give it a like or subscribe. It's totally weird saying that, but you know, everybody does. So hey, like, subscribe, <laughs> smash button. <laughs> but um, I will try to upload more frequently, no promises though. I do have a video already filmed, um, so I just have to edit it. So I'll try to keep on it a little bit better. Bear with me, but thank you guys so much, and until next time, I'll see you later.